I was actually able to make money in the two years that I spent at Stanford. So wow. what makes Stanford Stanford is the people who are willing to challenge the norm and try to do something completely new, something that nobody has tried before. So hi guys, we are back with another inspiration story of a graduate Stanford student who was able to pay all of his tuition fee just by working at Stanford. So hi Varun, can you please introduce yourself? Hey, uh, my name is Varun and uh, I'm currently finishing up my master's uh, degree at Stanford and uh, I did my undergraduate at Bitspilani Goa campus in mechanical engineering and uh, my degree at Stanford is basically a master's in mechanical engineering with a specialization in uh, robotics. So my first question would be how did the journey started? So after graduating from Bitspilani, why didn't you decide to do like get gains of work experience before coming to US? Uh-huh. Right. So, uh, right from childhood, uh, I had this desire to be among the best, like to be at the top. So in third year around, I had this interest in the intersection between mechanical engineering, electrical engineering and computer science, right. And robotics is at the heart of this intersection. So I think in India, there's this perception that if you have chosen a branch, then you should pursue just that branch, right. Just focus on that. But I was not that kind of person. I wanted to touch upon uh, these three different fields, right? Explore what I can do by combining these three different fields. And that is why I got interested in robotics and robotics being such a, an up and coming and cutting edge field. There's not much you can really do in India if you're interested in such a topic. So that is when my desire to go abroad was uh, ignited. And that's when I decided to go for masters and just going for a job because I knew I wanted to, I had to, uh, study at a top university, be among the best researchers and the best students to do something in robotics. Amazing. Now, how did you decide Stanford? So, you chose which schools you applied to and why you chose Stanford over other schools you got accepted to? So, the thing that stood out about Stanford was uh, the flexibility, right? So, I'd applied to uh, other colleges that offer an MS in robotics, which is UPenn, CMU, University of Michigan, Georgia Tech. But at Stanford, I mean, if you just have a look at my report card, the amount of flexibility that you'll notice, it's amazing. I've taken courses from the CS department, the mechanical engineering department, of course, the electrical department, as well as the aero astro department. Right? And the research that I did and the teaching that I did at Stanford was actually at the computer science department and not the mechanical department. So the flexibility that I got at Stanford just by exploring courses and research at all of these different departments, I think that is the thing that stood out at Stanford. And you can, in fact, create your own specialization. You can select courses, mix and match courses and create what is known as your depth at Stanford. So I think just the amount of flexibility offered uh, at Stanford really attracted me towards it. And also the proximity to, to Silicon Valley is uh, amazing because then you get to network with all these amazing professionals and your alumni uh, in this area. And the amount of opportunities both at big uh, companies like Facebook, Google and small startups uh, are, are really, really great. So I completely agree. The level of flexibility you get at Stanford is mm-hmm. mind blowing. Because in other schools, when branches change, there is time to prepare. It is possible, mm-hmm. but it takes time, permission, layers. Me work on, especially in grad school. Undergrad is easier, but grad me it's difficult, but it's easy at mm-hmm. Stanford. Now let's talk about the courses. So computer science, engineering, secret. That is pretty much same all over the world, and also same on online courses. Her university will be same. Hote but is it same at Stanford as well? Is one plus one equal to two or four at Stanford? <laughs> Right. So at Stanford, definitely you would find people who believe that one plus one equal to two, right? But what makes Stanford Stanford is the people who are willing to challenge the norm, right? And I think it reflects a bit in the courses as well, right? So whenever you take any course at Stanford, right, be it from computer science or whatever field, always towards the end of the course, when you're doing a project, right, you are encouraged to push your limits. You are encouraged to do research, to see what is out there. Uh, in the field and try to do something completely new. That's something as something that nobody has tried before. Even if you do a, do a basic course, right? even if you do an introductory course that you would do in undergrad, that right? you are encouraged to actually go outside, think outside of the box, right. And come up with something that maybe nobody has even thought about. And I think you are rewarded a lot for doing that at Stanford. And that is what makes Stanford students, Stanford students. 
Amazing. Now let's talk about the fees, tuition of grad school, because many so now like it's really, really hard to get funding opportunities mm-hmm. at these top schools, like fees be worth $30,000 to $40,000 per year, even after the aid, like research, teaching, teaching assistant, etc. So how you were able to pay all of, all of it on your own and how much was the fees before? Right. So initially when I came to Stanford, I had no funding, right? So for master students, it's pretty hard to get funding because it's mostly a course based program. You don't do much research, right? There's no required thesis. And most of the funding is focused on PhD students at Stanford. So in my case, what happened was I had to pay the initial year's tuition, right? Which is about 30 K. Right. And after that, the next two quarters and summer, uh, in the summer, actually, apart from working at a company, a surgical robotics company, I collaborated with Stanford researchers whom I knew beforehand and organized a workshop for high school students to learn robotics. Right. So I earned a few thousand dollars from that. Right. And then coming come next year, I taught two courses, right? One at the mechanical department, one at the computer science department, and that paid for all my studies and also paid me salary, which is equivalent to one quarter's tuition. Right. So after adding all of this up, right, along with what I earned in the summer and organizing those workshops at Stanford, I was actually able to make money in the two years that I spent at Stanford. So wow. it's all about hustling and uh, if you don't get tuition, it's not the end of the uh, tuition paid for our scholarship. It's not the end of the world. Just Absolutely. Come- at Georgia State University, I was able to get like fully funded master's program. I also made money by doing masters and also mm-hmm. some money by doing undergrad as well in the last year. It's all about like finding more and more opportunities. But did you work more than 20 hours in and during your master's or, or like equal 20 hours? No, no, just I worked for just 20 hours. Right. So at Stanford, working for 20 hours is a 50% appointment and that pays for all your tuition and pays you money equivalent to one quarter's tuition. Wow. Cancel already paid earlier as well as study for free. Amazing. That is phenomenal. And is that true for other IVs like, or like at MIT, Harvard, etc., or is it only unique at Stanford? Uh, as far as I know, um, it's probably the same at, uh, most universities around the U S right. I'm not sure how much they pay and how much tuition they waive. Right. But I think a 20 hour appointment should be able to cover for, uh, all of your tuition and pay you enough. But I'm not exactly sure. Sure, sure, sure. So now let's talk about the job prospects and opportunities you get at Stanford. So by getting to Stanford, does that mean like you guaranteed get job into like Google, Facebook easily? Like, is that like a 90% chance of what, what, what makes Stanford unique in terms of getting a job? So I would say that the struggle is real for both uh, graduates from Stanford or otherwise, right? Uh, while it may be true that you may get uh, the initial interest that you get from employers, right? Uh, may be easier to get if you're a graduate from either Stanford, Harvard, whatever, right? But after that, it's a level playing field, right? And what is interesting is that employers actually have different expectations from people who graduate from Stanford or Harvard, or whatever, right? They're not looking for anybody who can just satisfy the job description, right? They want to look for people. They want people and they expect people to do something different, to build something new. What can you do that disrupts the field? What can you do that makes the product unique or gives an edge to the organization that you're being hired at? Right? So this is what employers expect. And that is exactly what all employers have spoken to told me. Right. So this is, we know that you're from Stanford, you can do, uh, you can satisfy these requirements, but what else can you do? What can you show me? Why should I hire you? I think that is different uh, when you are graduating from one of these units. Wow. So in short, the difference here is that like a normal average student from average university can get to that field through referral. So after getting to that field, like if you have the interview opportunity, you got the interview opportunity, you're on the plane field, both, both the places, right? Yeah, that's exactly true. I would Perfect. say that initially it might be, it might seem easier to get the call, to get the, uh, to get the opportunity. But after that, your the struggle is the same. I mean, everybody I know also has struggled over here to get a job, especially during these times. Right? So I I don't think uh, being from Stanford or Harvard gives you the permission to be complacent when applying. So you just you just have to struggle. And what about the salary? So do you get like uh, like salaries more than the average students, or like better growth opportunities? So the salary may difference, yeah, 
Um, I'm not sure about that, right? So the salary, I think, is finally determined by what skill set you bring to the company. Right? It doesn't matter what uh, which university is on your resume. So the salary, there's no differentiator over there. Right? You might be given a salary lower than some some person from an average so-called average institute. Right? Wow. Finally, depends on what you offer the company. That is amazing. That was biggest myth. A lot of us have key, but if you, if you make it to Harvard, MIT or Stanford, you will have like double the package of other average university students. So now let's talk about what was unique in your profile that got you into Stanford. Was it the GRE score or your essay or your research? Right. So when it comes to your application, I feel that the GRE and the TOEFL scores are just mere filters, right? I think if you have a decent enough score, you really should not be worrying about that. I think what makes you stand out in your application is the potential to do something great, right? You have to show these universities that you are interested in a particular thing and you have done something. Right. So in my case, uh, I, what I did was, uh, Bits Pilani actually has the option to graduate early. So I finished off all my courses in three years and I reserved the next one year just to work at uh, organizations do research in robotics, uh, get some publications out there. So in my third year, I did research at IIT Madras. And then I came to the US for five months to work on something really particular, which is aerial manipulation. So this again, uh, actually made me stood out, stand out because uh, people work on drones and people work on robotic arms. But uh, how many people work on robotic arms that are mounted on top of drones? Right? So I found this researcher in the US and I worked under him. And uh, uh, again, this led to another publication. And the next six months, I worked at BARC in Mumbai in the robotics division. And over there, I was able to get uh, do some more research and volunteer at the same time. And uh, this particular volunteering experience really gave me a lot of exposure because the project that I did was recognized so much that I was invited to Delhi to meet the president of France. And... Uh, there were like articles in the newspaper and it was really an amazing experience for me. So I think the impact that that project created was something that really boosted my profile a lot. Wow. So you think that there's a lot of research projects. So is it about the quantity of research projects you do or like the quantity of publications or the quality of publications? So what do you it's, de- it's It's definitely the quality of the publications and it doesn't even matter if you have a publication or not. I think it whether you come from a research background or whether you come from a startup background or a corporate background, uh, these universities want to see what you have done that others have not, how much you have explored the field, how much you have pushed your limits, right? what different have you done in that field that others have not, and what is the potential you show to do something great in that field. So these universities are like, okay, have you, do you have the potential to do this? We have the resources for you. I think that is the way these universities work, uh, at least the top universities. That's what they're looking for. And uh, I think in my case, uh, graduating early and getting all of that experience, both doing research and volunteering gave me that edge. Wow. So now finally, what would be the tips you want to give to prospective students who want to make it to Harvard, MIT, Stanford, etc., for graduate studies? Right. So my advice would be that uh, one thing I observed uh, in the people who are here is that they are extremely hardworking and hard work beats talent hands down. So you might see people uh, who have been coding ever since they were like some five years old or people who have, you know, uh, cracked IIT, AIR1 or whatever, like whatever these child prodigies that you have seen, of course, they are really, really great and you should take inspiration from them, but that does not mean that you don't belong with them. Right? So, uh, I would say that if you are interested in a certain topic, just pursue it, right? And I think these universities, the top universities are looking for somebody who really thinks differently, right? Who really has explored the field, explored different parts of the field. I think in my case, I was able to demonstrate that uh, I have interest in this interdisciplinary, the inter- interdisciplinary field of robotics, right? which does touches upon all kinds of topics. And I think if you are that kind of person who is curious, who is inquisitive, who really wants to build something new from scratch, right? You need to show that you can and not just say that you can, but show that you can, right? So I think 
just go out there and just do something that you're passionate about and build something, go into the depth of something, right? And uh, these universities will definitely see your passion and give you the admit that you want. So good luck to all of you guys. Amazing. Thank you so much, Varun, for sharing your valuable information. It was a pleasure having you here. I hope this video adds value to all the graduate students out there. Thank you so much, Arnold.